Yeah, I mean, it's, it's quite counterintuitive, but when you think that it's over 70% of the FTSE's earnings come from over, overseas, it's just, it's just the rebasing of, of, of share prices. The share prices happen to be denominated in sterling, but these companies are actually international companies, so it makes sense that they increase to offset the, the, the decrease in the, in the value of the pound. I think the other thing as well is that we've seen a bit of a monetary stimulus um, on, the back of, on the back of the Brexit vote. And obviously we've seen Mark Carney criticised for that now, but at the time he was under a lot of pressure to do something. And that's obviously provided further monetary stimulus through quantitative easing, which has fueled asset prices further. Yeah, I, th you know, I have some sympathy for him. I mean, everybody was shouting at him to do something in the aftermath of the of the vote, and the same people are shouting at him now, saying that he, he reacted too early. So I have a degree of sympathy, but having said that, he didn't have to do anything for quite a long time. So he's now having he's now having to actually do the job he was he he's paid to do. Well, I think. The reality is nobody knows it's conjecture at the moment. Um, there's going to be lots of positioning statements. There's going to be, um, you know, there's going, to, there's going to be lots of differing views, both from the Europeans and, the, you know, people within Britain, but also from the constituent parties within within the UK. The reality is until April and May, when when Article 50 is likely to be invoked, we just we just don't know, and we can see there's factions within the Tory Party that are at odds as well. So you've got David Davis, who's far more in favour of, of a harder stance. You've got Phil Hammond, who's much more in favour of a soft stance. Ultimately, the Europeans may force a hard Brexit, but we just don't know. So um, I'm sure there'll be lots of uncertainty for the, for the next few months. Uh, that's a very good question. I think ultimately it will. The, uh, you can see the SNP are, are starting to make noises again. Um, but if you read their statements carefully, um, a lot of it's being spun effectively. There's not much appetite, I don't think, when I go back up to Scotland for, a, for another referendum on independence. But I think T Theresa May can't be too complacent in that front and she needs to include um, the relevant views of you know, all parts of the UK in the discussions. And Scotland certainly voted unanimously to stay within the, within the European Union. So the views have to be taken, taken on board. Well, we have been negative on sterling for quite a period of time, nearly nine years, in fact. Um, and actually, we think it is starting to present a, a, an opportunity. In our mind, um, Brexit was actually just a catalyst for the re-rating of sterling, which was long overdue. We've had twin deficits, which we've been talking about for a long time. We're not bringing in um, enough tax to, to cover the expenditure from a, a government point of view. And we're importing far more than we're exporting. So. Um, sterling was arguably overvalued. This has been the catalyst that's brought it, brought it into sight. But we do know from history that the propensity and the elasticity of, of the UK economy to recover on the back of currency weakness is, is quite significant. So we think it's starting to, to present value, but it will probably continue to weaken for another, another few months and certainly until we get some degree of certainty over what Brexit actually means. Well, we um, are starting to de-risk portfolios. I mean, I think if you, you have to take your, 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 yourself out of the relative mindset and think that, you know, for our higher risk portfolios, we're, you know, we're up about 14% year to date. Now, that's an incredible return for, uh, you know, a, a very short period of time. We've basically had two years worth of, of, of annual returns in one year. Um, so we are starting to de-risk portfolios. Um, there's a lot of risk on the horizon. There's lots of political risk, particularly in, in, in Europe. We've got a, an Italian referendum and an Austrian referendum coming up on the, on the same day. Um, it looks highly likely that the, the far right party could get in in Austria, which is going to create more uncertainty. We've got Merkel up for, for re-election in the next year. We've got French elections coming up. So there's a lot of political uncertainty um, at a time where we've just had the Brexit vote, at a time where the general populace are, are showing a degree of disquiet. So I think to to actually take some risk off the table is sensible at this stage.